I have some breaking news that relates to the very foundations of American society. This article reads, John Roberts' secret Trump memo revealed in huge SCOTUS leak. And this article details how the New York Times obtained a new memo and it indicates that the Chief Justice, John Roberts, wanted to act quick and decisively to help Donald Trump secure his presidential immunity ruling. This article is a massive bombshell and this SCOTUS immunity ruling only furthers his wildest, wildest urges. When it comes to Project 2025, something that Trump tried to do during his first term was a Schedule F executive order, and he succeeded. It said that he could fire and rehire thousands of civil servants at his own will. Their merit doesn't matter. All that matters is how loyal they are. Now, Biden removed that executive order immediately, and Project 2025, the entire foundation of it, is the Schedule F executive order. After Trump does that, he is free to do everything else in Project 2025, so he has already tried to do this, and the Supreme Court ruling helps him. This reads, The Supreme Court was hit by a flurry of damaging new leaks Sunday as a series of confidential memos written by the Chief Justice were revealed by the New York Times. The court's Chief Justice, John Roberts, was clear to his fellow justices back in February. He wanted the court to take up a case weighing Donald Trump's right to presidential immunity, and he seemed inclined to protect the former president. Quote, I think it is likely that we will view the separation of powers analysis differently, Roberts wrote to his Supreme Court peers according to a private memo obtained by the Times. He was referencing the D.C. Circuit of Appeals decision to allow the case to move forward. Roberts took an unusual level of involvement in this and other cases that ultimately benefited Trump, according to the Times. His handling of the cases surprised even some other justices on the high court across ideological lines. As president, Trump appointed three of the members of its current conservative supermajority. And this is where it gets crazy. Such was the case in March that debated whether Colorado or any state had the authority to remove an official from a federal ballot. Roberts persuaded the other justices to make their opinion that states could not unilaterally drop Trump from the ballot, and this ultimately helped Trump, and it was steered by Chief Justice John Roberts. And the judges agreed until the conservatives sought to include an additional proposition that made sure anyone seeking to enforce that constitutional ban on insurrectionists getting into office get congressional approval first, which is crazy. Even Amy Coney Barrett thought that idea went too far, and Roberts himself wrote the majority opinion. Roberts also took charge of the court's ruling that declared the government went too far in charging those who stormed the Capitol on January 6th. And we'll get to the section about Justice Alito, but really quickly watch this clip of Rachel Maddow breaking it down. I really did not expect that they would do this. And they, you know, Donald Trump and his counsel um, asked for this 100 percent absolute immunity thing, which was insane. I would say they got 105 percent of what they were asking for. They got immunity from this court, despite some of the language in Judge Justice Roberts's the ruling saying that there was some 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 measure of humility or some measure of restraint. The practical impact of what they have done is to give Trump immunity that even he and his counsel did not ask for. And given that the hypotheticals over the course of these arguments, as you rightly pointed out, included things like, can the president assassinate a rival? I think we have to look at the Supreme Court's affirmative answer to that. Yes, you can. Um, with as much seriousness as it deserves. I mean, this is a death squad ruling. This is a ruling that says that as long as you can construe it as an official or quasi-official act, you can do absolutely anything. And in Donald Trump's eyes, they will be able to twist any single act into an official act. So Chief Justice John Roberts had initially assigned the January 6th case to Samuel Alito, but abruptly took it over himself days after the Times revealed that Alito's wife hung an upside-down U.S. flag. It was unclear whether or not Samuel Alito was removed from the case because of his wife, but it seems very likely. The switch, however, was unusual among court standards. Thus came the Trump ruling. The 
conservatives had voted to grant Trump and all presidents expansive immunity for official acts during their tenure, but Roberts again took the case for himself, prompting some of the court to wonder whether he may have taken on too much. He got pushback from justices, both liberal Sotomayor and conservative Barrett, though the opinion made it through in July, providing Trump with a clear win. The New York Times' official report reads, The immunity case, Trump v. United States, would determine whether and how the once president could be prosecuted on charges of trying to overturn an election. After the Chief Justice sent his February 22nd memo showing that he was sympathetic to Mr. Trump's arguments, his position became stronger. Justice Kavanaugh responded the next morning, agreeing with the Chief's logic, according to insiders who knew of the exchange. The three most conservative justices were presumably on board, and with two of the justices of the court's ideological center in agreement, the direction was very clear. And this was all, again, steered by Chief Justice John Roberts, according to these new leaked memos. At the justices' private conference meeting that day, Justice Sotomayor protested that she did not see how the court could reverse the appellate decision. It would look like the Supreme Court was being used to delay the trial, she said, according to someone with knowledge of the proceedings, and that is what everybody immediately thought. She read the situation correctly. So she, and other liberal justices focused on the crucial question of timing. Every day that the court waited to hear the case was a benefit to Mr. Trump, diminishing the possibility of a trial before the November 5th election. At the meeting, some of the court's most conservative members said they did not want to hear the case until the start of the next term in October, according to several court insiders. So there we go. Justice Thomas, who favored scheduling arguments in October, told colleagues that he did not want to see the court dragged into political battles, but in and of itself, Self that makes it inherently political. Justice Gorsuch agreed. The matter was too important to rush, he said, and lawyers on the case would need time to prepare their strongest arguments. Let me know what you think about Chief Justice John Roberts and his insidious scheme to push forward the agenda of Trump within the Supreme Court. We have known for a while that the Supreme Court is working at the behest of Donald Trump and helping him speedrun our country into a soft dictatorship, but now, with these new leaked memos, we have absolute confirmation. Thankfully, we have tools at our disposal to stop this from happening. We can vote blue in November, we can canvas, we can door knock. I will be in Wisconsin in early October door knocking. If you live in or around Wisconsin, there will be a link in the description below. Make sure you leave a like on the video, comment a blue heart, hit that subscribe button so you can be a part of this beautiful community that we're building. Most importantly, have a great rest of your day and peace out.